All right, welcome guys. This is the tutorial for making the junk journals. So here is my finished junk journal, and I'm gonna go through step-by-step step on how I put this junk journal together. And junk journals are pretty much meant to be um, put together with recycled materials. So that's why I have all these really weird different pieces of uh, just random paper in here. So let's get started. I'm just gonna tell you what you're getting in the kit, and then we are going to jump right in and put this together. Now obviously you're not gonna get this. This uh, green happens to be my favorite color and this little band I had at the house and it fits really nice on my journal. So so that is my finished journal and so let's just jump in. I'm gonna tell you what you're gonna get and then let's get building. So everybody is going to get these. Now in the video I tried cutting these with a pair of scissors and it was almost impossible. So I am going to pre-cut these for you so you're going to have a front and a back, and then a small piece, which is the spine. And then I will show you how to put all that together. So this is for the outside of your book. Everybody is going to get two composition books. What I am doing with this is this tape that is on the outside of these books, we are going to cut the covers off, we are going to remove the paper, and these are going to be glued onto here to keep your front and your back and your spine of your book put together. And I will definitely go into detail about how that happens. You are also going to get uh, some ribbon, and I have a whole bunch of different color uh, ribbons, so you're all going to get some of these, and that is what's going to hold your pages into your book. I have 22 of these sets of uh, glitter gel pens. If I get more than 22 people that sign up, um, there might be some siblings that will be sharing these. Um, so I do apologize, I only have 22 and I am a week away and I've already got quite a few people signed up. So unless I hit too many people, you'll all get your own set. If there's not enough to go around, some siblings might be sharing these. Um, but I do have enough watercolor paint and I'm just going to give everybody one of these little sets of watercolor paints because uh, some of the pages that I give you are actually watercolor paper and if you wanted to you can use watercolor paper uh, for your whole journal and just paint in it little things and just stick it in your journal if you wish. All right. Um, I do have a few sheets of watercolor paper left over from a previous uh, project that we did so I'm going to give you guys some uh, at least one sheet of watercolor paper. And then here's another thing that we had left over from another program, uh, the black paper. Um, I actually had some of the black paper in my journal, and when I had put them in, I wanted them to look kind of weird, so I actually ripped the sides instead of cutting with scissors uh, in just sort of a square shape. So yeah, that's the same paper, so you're going to get some of those. Okay. I don't have enough room on my desk, so I'm just going to leave this here. Um, I also have some of these little guys, these are like little envelopes, some really weird old looking pieces of paper. Um, I'm going to give you all a couple pieces of these so that you can add something uh, like that to your book as you're making it. And then I also have some of these um, plain brown little envelopes. You can always stick something in there, glue it to your paper, or stick something in there. Uh, so those. Uh, you'll get as well. And then I had asked you all what your favorite colors are. Uh, so that is so I can try to get you a color bandana uh, that you want. So that was the purpose of asking you what colors you liked. I'm going to try to get you guys at least your first choice. Uh, personally, I like green, so I just took a piece of green for me. All right. I also had some of this paper left over from a project that uh, we did last summer, so I'm going to divvy up some of these color papers that you can use as well. And then last but not least, and I'm pretty sure I'm forgetting to tell you about something, but I'm giving you all a little bit of this um, uh, Aliens Tacky Glue to glue your stuff down. Now I did find out while making this video that if you do use too much of the glue, it is bleeding through and it did discolor, so if you Use it a little bit sparingly. Um, I got a little heavy-handed with the glue. 
uh, so you can see that this had discolored right here. So use less than I did, um, especially if you've got a light color like yellow or white, this might end up showing through. So be careful with the glue if you don't want um, the glue to bleed through. Use a little less than I do. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in. Um, some of this is filmed at my house um, over the weekend. So there will be times when my puppy is running in and out of the room that I'm working in. And he can sometimes be a bit of a pain. He's a 70 pound uh, pit bull. He's two years old and he's got way too much energy. <laughs> so let's go ahead and jump into it and uh, let's make our junk journal. Okay guys, so let's go ahead and get started on our project. So I did my first step last night, but I'm just gonna tell you how I did it. So you take your boards, and what you're going to do is you're going to bind these together. So basically this is the spine of your book, and then this is the front and the back cover. And what you're gonna wanna do is you need to get these um, together, but you want your book to stay flexible. So if your book, uh, if the, um, let's put these like this, it's a bit easier. If you were to bind your book so that it was, uh, these pieces all touched, you're going to have the hardest time opening and closing your book. So I will show you the example of the one that I used last night. This was the one that I sort of messed with and I left a gap and this is probably a bigger gap than you actually need. Um, it, this gap probably could be a little smaller, but you want your book to be flexible so that you can open and close it. And if you were to bind this together with these touching, you would have a really hard time opening and closing this. So you want to leave a bit of a gap. And one way you can do that is if you, um, to judge how far apart these need to be, you could put these side by side. You could take one of your pieces like this and then lay it back down flat. And then you can see there's a gap. So you want your gap to be, I would say probably about yay big. If I got a ruler here, let's see. This gap is, oh yeah, it's like a, what is that? A sixteen, an eighth of an inch. So that gap is uh, pretty tiny. Uh, this gap that I made last night, which was way bigger than it needed to be. Um, yeah, that's like twice the size of the gap that you actually needed your gap to be. So you don't have to uh, make your gap that big. But yeah, a, um, an eighth of an inch is fine. Um, so on your ruler here, um, it's like two of the smallest notches on your ruler. That is an eighth of an inch. So that was as far as part, um, the minimum, I think, that you probably should do. Anything closer or if these are touching when you bind these together, yeah, you're gonna have a hard time opening and closing your book. All right, so I'm just gonna put these aside and I'm just gonna show you um, what I did in order to make mine. So I basically took the two composition books and I'm gonna try to get you guys enough composition books. It just depends on how many people sign up. Um, I, have, I found out last night that the uh, binding tape on these composition books um, work really well. And we are a week before I'm supposed to have these kit together. So hopefully I can go to the dollar store and get enough for you guys. But I'll see how many people um, have actually signed up for this uh, before I go get the books. So uh, what I did is I um, opened up the composition book. And they're all held together by string. Now I... Um, do not recommend doing it this way. If you have to do it this way, please get a parent to help you or have a parent do it your, themselves because these knives are really sharp. What I did is I just used my, uh, my utility knife here to pull the strings so that I can uh, get them cut and then you just remove them if you can. So... Yeah, and that's just literally what I did is I'm just cutting the strings and if I can grab it, I'm just pulling the string back through. So there's the string. So if you can't get a parent to help you, 
um, maybe use a needle. Please don't use a utility blade like I am. Um, I have cut myself during my craft projects before. It's not fun. Uh, so uh, please, if you decide to go this route with the uh, composition books, have somebody help you. Um, especially, you know, you younger guys. But like you can see, uh, these uh, come right out. And so once you've taken all the strings out, your composition cover is basically going to come away from the paper and you end up with a big block of paper. So here's the uh, the inside of my composition book. You can see there's where the strings was. And the strings are, are holding the pages together too, so your pages will no longer stay together. So keep your uh, the pages because you can use these inside your junk journal later and then once you have your junk journal or your composition books apart um, again uh, use a pair of scissors but I used my blade because I do not practice good safety and I had just basically cut this away from the binding tape then I had just used my tacky glue to glue this down the way that I did it is I actually folded this in half, put the glue on the front and back, and then just used a whole bunch of binder clips that I had sitting around the house. And I just held these together for an hour, and then I came back and did it uh, the other side. If you want to speed up this process, you can do this all together. Just make sure that you've left enough gap and you can Put your book down, leave yourself that eighth of an inch gap, and then you can put your glue down, lay your binding tape directly um, over it, and then just use like a book or some weight uh, to hold the tape down for an hour until the tacky glue um, has uh, started binding. Um, the tacky glue itself will not fully um, harden or fix, whatever the term is. Um, I think it's a, it does take about a full 24 to 48 hours, depending on which tacky glue you have, but an hour is enough of, um, uh, for it to be, uh, you know, adhered enough so that you can pick it up. So at least leave it an hour and then you can come back and then you just start filling your book. Oh, my puppy's coming in the house. Hi, destructive 70 pound puppy. Uh, so, um, yeah, this is what my book ended up looking like when I was done. My gap here was at least twice as big as it really needed to be. Uh, but yeah, I was experimenting last night before I shot the video just so that I knew what the heck I was doing before uh, I did this. So I'm going to go on to the next part, which is filling the book. And, uh, uh hi puppy. Um, <laughs> hi. Okay, you're going to help. Yeah, thank you. All right. Okay. Yes, thank you for the kiss. Ugh. <laughs> oh gosh. That's what happens when you do the stuff at home instead of inside the library. All right, so the next thing before we go on is we're going to put um, our fabric on the cover. And I gave you all a bandana. Um, you can use any fabric you want, or you can go ahead and just leave it as the cardboard if you want, and you can draw or something on the outside. Um, but uh, we thought, yeah, let's just give you guys at least one piece of fabric so that if you wanted to cover your outside, you could. Or you can use something at home. You can use wrapping paper if you found something that you like, or, you know, you can cover it any way you want. If you do decide to use the bandana, um, they are pretty wrinkled and so you're going to want to either iron them out or you can do what I'm going to do which is just to put them in the dryer um, with just a little bit of uh, water. So I might just spray just a tiny bit of water on this, throw it in the dryer and then all the wrinkles will be gone so I'll be back in a minute. Alright so I got my bandana out of the dryer. Um, it's not 100% wrinkle free. Uh, but, you know, you kind of get the point. Uh, get your wrinkles out. You can iron this or, you know, do what I did, throw in the dryer. 
So we are going to flip this over so that that is the back. And I sort of uh, eyeballed the size of this earlier and compared it to my book uh, just to sort of see where everything lines up. And my dog is um, having some zoomies, so you're going to hear him running around. Hi. Yes, I know. You want to play, but we'll play later. <laughs> Shoo. <laughs> All right, so what we're going to end up doing is we are going to start... Um, on the bind or the spine of the book and I'm going to put down some glue just in this area and I'm going to just sort of eyeball it and I'm going to set it down <laughs> um uh hi Tugbug yes I see you so I'm going to um put some glue uh, on here just in the middle and I'm just going to eyeball it and then I'm just going to lay it down and then just sort of stretch the material a little bit and put down some weight and just let it sit here for a little bit. Then I'm going to take my dog outside and I'm going to throw the ball so he can chase it and get off all this energy so I can finish this film. So um, let's go ahead and do that. And anybody who knows me knows that green is my favorite color. So I chose a green bandana. Um, and uh, let's see. Let's get this in here. Nice. Yeah, that'll work really nice. And it just so happens that um, on the inside, if you fold this over, um, it will cover the entire inside as well. And so I might do that on the inside um, so that my inside has all this cool kind of paisley and that my outside would sort of uh, have uh, this part of the bandana showing. And then I remembered I had a... A Starbucks present um, a couple years ago. It was a mug, and it came with this uh, this uh, uh, little stretchy thing. It's, uh, it's too small for a headband. It was just some kind of a decorative thing that was on the gift. And hey, look, it's uh, it uh, matches quite well. So I'm actually going to use this as a way to keep my book closed. So once again, just any recycled materials that you have in the house, uh, that is what these books are. Um, primarily made out of so find any old thing that'll work for you like I'm going to use this and it just so happens that it matches really nice all right so let's go ahead and get my tacky glue on here then I'm going to center it put it on the bandana put some uh, some weight on it some books or something just to kind of keep it flat and then uh, let it sit for a little bit so that it has uh, enough time to get uh, uh, cured and, and stuck uh, onto the cardboard so I'm going to speed up the video now and you can just kind of watch what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just going to wait a little while, and uh, then we will go ahead and uh, glue down the sides, uh, the front and back, and then we will go ahead and wrap this and start working on getting uh, the inside all uh, tacked down. All right, so I let this sit for a little while, and let's just check it out, and hopefully I didn't actually glue it to my mat. Let's see. Looks like it's pretty good. All right, so I'm just going to flip it over really quick. I'm hoping that the tacky glue, um, you know, isn't really obvious through the fabric, but let's see. A moment of... Oh, yeah, it went through. Well, I'm glad I picked it up so that it doesn't uh, stay glued to this. So, yeah, you can see that that went through. So I think what I did is I put a little too much on. Maybe I got a little carried away. Um... And that is okay. Uh, tacky glue tends to dry clear, so hopefully that will be okay. And you know, to be honest, I'm kind of digging the whole 
pattern that that made. So I'm actually going to set this aside and let it continue to dry like that. And then I'm going to uh, try and get this tacky glue off of my mat before it sets in. Now this is uh, an old sewing mat that I no longer use for sewing. So I don't care that I have glue on it. Now if you have one of these mats that you're using at home and your mom actually does use it for sewing, I do not recommend putting glue on it. Or else you will be giving up your allowance to get your mom a new mat. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to lay this back down and just let it uh, continue to dry. And let's hope that that uh, pattern doesn't uh, become too terribly obvious. Because it did go through in the areas that I put a little too much down. I always, I always overdo it on my glue. And you know, to be honest, since uh, junk journals are meant to be kind of eclectic looking, I'm kind of digging the pattern. So I'm not all that concerned. Just as long as the tacky glue, when it dries, does not continue to stay tacky on the outside of my fabric. It shouldn't, but it will take a little bit longer for, for the glue to set. Yeah, I put a little too much glue on that. Uh, maybe you guys can uh, learn from my mistakes and do a little less. Alright, I checked the glue um, on this side and it's all ready to go. So what I did is on the outside of the book, uh, you can tell from this one here that this is the outside. So I put down some glue and I laid my fabric over it and I just let it uh, cure a little bit until it wasn't going to move. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing um, on this side and just show you what I did. So I'm just going to grab a bit of this tacky glue and give it a shake <laughs> so that the glue goes down. So once that is uh, cured and nice and stuck, then I will show you how we are going to attach it to the inside and finish up the wrapping. All right, so the glue's starting to go through, so I am going to put it just like this. And I've got it nice and taut, and I'm just sort of tucking the excess fabric underneath so it doesn't move. All right. And yeah, the fabric did go, or the glue did go through the fabric. So just trying to make sure that it doesn't shift around. I'm just gonna let it sit like this. And I'm going to, once again, get my excess glue off of here. If you don't have one of these cutting mats, um, you can always put down a little piece of cardboard. Uh, you can also use a paper grocery bag, um, anything that protects your surfaces so that you don't get anything on your tables, especially if you're using the kitchen table or a coffee table. You don't want to ruin your furniture with a bunch of glue. I've done that. But then again, I don't buy fancy furniture because I am really destructive <laughs> with my belongings. Okay, so most of the glue is done. All right, so just let this sit and stay taut so that the fabric really isn't scooting around. And just let it, uh, let it finish drying a little bit. 
Okay, so I'm going to hit pause again, and then I'll be back here uh, in a little bit, and we'll show you how to do the inside. So I finished tacking down this side of the book. So I glued down a little bit in the front, and then I flipped it over, and then I glued down this side. So I will show you how I did it on this end. All right, so I have these two sides along this uh, edge here glued down. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna just fold them straight up and then I am going to glue this down to the inside of my board. So I have the cover on my little book. So like I said I was gonna do, I put glue uh, just in a line on this side so uh, that this part wasn't um, tacked down completely. So what it did is it gave me like a little pocket if I wanted to slip a piece of paper uh, or maybe a pen or something in there. Uh, I didn't make it very loose. I mean, whatever you put in here is not going to be very uh, wide. Uh, it's like good enough for like a couple papers or something. So if you wanted to make it so that like you can put bigger stuff in there, you know, um, don't make, don't pull it so tight like I did. <laughs> and of course my puppy's in here with me this morning. So, but anyway, there's the inside and then here is the outside. And so the next thing I'm going to do is just show you um, how we're going to put in all of our scraps of paper uh, to make the junk journal. So we'll start that and then what's the best part about this is that once I get the one in here you're gonna know exactly what to do with any other scraps that you find that you want to start adding to your uh, junk journal and then I can show you some examples of what other people have done. Uh, so this is almost finished and I'm super stoked about this. Okay so I'm going to turn this off really quick and gather the rest of my supplies and show you how to put this together. All right, so the next step what I'm gonna do is just show you how we are going to be attaching our stacks of paper. So um, you're all going to get one of each of these colors of ribbon. It should be more than enough uh, for you guys uh, to be able to um, uh, tie this around your book uh, to, to do your binding basically and it's really simple all you're going to do is take your length of ribbon you're going to tie it around your book and then you want the bow to actually be on the outside so which is why I wasn't all that worried about this stuff being dark because um, the ribbons are all going to go across here anyway so um, you should have uh, more than enough to go around and tie a tiny bow uh, on the outside and what that does is it's going to give something for your papers to anchor onto so I'm just going to take one really quick wrap it around and tie a little bow put one of my pieces of paper in there and just sort of give you an idea of how you're going to attach all your papers okay so I'm gonna hit pause for a second get a length of this and then just show you all right so I've got 
a length here and I'm going to make sure that I've given myself enough to tie a bow which looks like it's going to be about roughly that much so if I can just find where I put my scissors last night oh I see them okay so I measured out how much I was going to need um, everybody's going to get uh, enough ribbon for this so it looks like was that 18 inches and then what plus uh, what was that so we got 18 plus it looks like five or six uh, so yeah we're looking at we're looking at about uh, 24 25 inches all right, so I know that the books are 10 inches tall. So yeah, 20 inches about with, uh, you know, five or four more inches, totally enough to make a small bow. I might give you enough to see if, uh, how easy this bow is for me to make. Now you want this to be somewhat tight. You don't want there to be a whole heck of a lot of wiggle room. And if you got somebody to help you um, hold this down while you do your bow and in fact I'm probably gonna make mine a knot uh, so it looks like 24 is not enough I think I'll probably bump it up uh, to maybe 28 30 inches to give you guys enough room to be able to make a cute little bow I'm just gonna tie this into a knot and then the rest of mine <laughs> will probably be bows okay so I've tied this on and you can see I can get my hand in here it's not horribly tight all right so you flip it over and then these were the pages that I had made uh, yesterday. And it's really simple. So you take your papers like so, and then you just slip them in here until they are like this. And so now they're secured. And uh, just because I can, and because these were meant to be, you know, kind of funky journals that are odd in design. I'm going to just throw this in the center here because I can. All right, so here is my first section of my journal. So I'm going to pull this up here so you can see it. All right, so now I've got some of my pages secured. I can start um, adding to it. Um, I can put in some odd stuff this looks like um i think i put a piece of um uh, watercolor paper that i had laying around on the outside so you can draw on here you can uh, write in here you can do whatever you want and then here's a an odd piece in the center that you can do something fun with so keep doing that with your papers until you have the whole thing filled so I'm going to hit pause and I've got some other scraps here that I'm going to put in there and then I will show you some of the little extra stuff that we put into your packets and what you can do with it. But anyway, my journal is on its way and, uh, and I'll just keep going. All right, I got my journal pretty much finished, uh, minus, you know, all the little add-ons that you can glue in and stick her in as you're going. So I have added all of my ribbons to the edge of the book and I have um, gone through all of my supplies of uh, scrap uh, paper that I have lying around. Uh, so I'll just give you some examples. So this is just some watercolor paper. Uh, this was, uh, it was in some packing uh, materials. And then of course, you know, I've got these like old weird pieces of paper um, this I believe is also watercolor. Here's another one of those composition books. Um, I took some pages out of one of those composition notebooks that I'm going to give you, uh, that we used the binding tape to make the outside of the book. So yeah, I just grabbed some of the paper, I cut it down to size, and then I just, uh, slipped them, uh, inside my ribbon. And um, this was just a piece of some white cardboard. And then in the middle here, I got some of these weird pieces of paper. Another piece of cardboard that I just, I folded in half. More watercolor paper. Um, I had some, some black craft paper in the library. So I'm gonna give you guys some of this uh, black paper as well. Uh, that's more watercolor paper. Another little piece of cardboard. Um, and then 
Uh, this was that first piece of paper I did that I showed you that had the, um, the printed stuff and then my first comp book that I put in. So you can see that this it's got pretty big um, and I still have a lot more room. So if I wanted to add stuff, glue things to the pages, um, try to get any more pieces of paper in there that I can. But anyway, in its essence, this is a junk journal. And so now it is all finished and I'm just gonna have so much fun filling this. One thing that you can do if you don't want to um, try to paint or draw in the book, you know, you can always take the paper out lay it on your table, paint whatever you want, and then all you'd have to do is just lift up your ribbon like this, and then just slip the paper back in when you're done. So you can either just go ahead and fill this thing with paper now, or you know, you just add paper as time goes by, as you're, you know, you're adding stuff to it. And then I still have the little pockets, so like if I wanted to, you know, slip a piece of, uh, paper in here so oh yeah I got some bug spray so you could like slip a piece of paper in there so it goes all the way down and then this has a piece of glue here and I could put a pen uh, one thing that I did find out about the um, tacky glue is it does actually leave marks so you can see my marks right here uh, so um, when I was doing this I had actually had glue in here but I didn't put down a whole lot in this area so if you use just a tiny bit of glue and maybe rub it around with your finger, it doesn't bleed through, the fabric is bad. And then you can kind of see that I had that right here on the outside. But you know what? These are supposed to be kind of funky junky. So if there's some discoloration, you know, to be honest, I think it adds character to your book. So you can do whichever you like. Um, so yeah, now the book is complete and you guys can have fun filling this um, with whatever you want from drawings to notes to you know hey what did i do today or hey i had inspiration i want poetry today so yeah you can fill it all up and it is yours to keep and have fun with this and uh yeah this is kind of a neat little book and i was really uh i had a fun time making this over the weekend okay guys enjoy see you next time bye